Yo, what's happening, man? Hey, how's it going? I'm just setting this up for Marta real quick. I love it. Hey. It's a nice little cameo for the video. Oh, is it on right now? Oh my God. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marta Henderson and I'm from San Francisco, California. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Circus Hiatus, a brand new mini series where we interview circus artists around the globe to hear how their careers have been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. I'm Aaron Marquise, and today's episode is so interesting that even I learned something I didn't know. Today we are speaking with Marta Henderson. Marta and I studied together at the National Circus School in Montreal, and for the past few years, she's been working with Cirque du Soleil until COVID-19 stepped in, and then, well, I'll let her tell it. Let's go to the interview. Uh, so why don't we start with, um, who are you? Tell us who you are. All right, so I started my circus journey in San Francisco at the Circus Center and we would go to an after school program three times a week. I started under Mr. Lui and just train Chinese acrobatics, traditional Chinese acrobatics. I was part of the youth circus there. And then after high school, I decided to move to Montreal and go to L'Ecole Nationale de Cirque. And I attended that for four years. And there I worked with my partner, Dominic Cruz. So the National Circus School of Montreal is usually three years, correct? Right. So what, how did you do four? When I was accepted, I first auditioned as a soloist in Chinese pole. And I was accepted into the program called Mise en Vaux. So you come to the school, do a year as normal, like a first year would. But when the auditions come again, you re-audition. And basically it's a trial year to see if they really want you as a student if you're ready for circus school in general. And when I auditioned, I auditioned the second time with Dominic as duo hoop diving. And so we auditioned as generalist in duo hoop diving and duo pole climbing. And we were both accepted together. We graduated June of 2014, and when we graduated, we did about a year, year and a half of just us two freelancing, and then we got picked up by Cirque du Soleil. And what was that like for you, getting hired by Cirque du Soleil? Is that something you had always wanted to do going into the circus world, or uh, was that just a, a part of the career that came later for you? I kind of never thought that I would be picked up by Cirque du Soleil. Just by being a hoop diver, they generally used hoop diving from the Chinese troops. And I was a duo, so I kind of always thought that I would be involved in kind of smaller productions or smaller circus companies. Um, but they, when they were doing their casting for this show, they did take a different kind of profile. And they actually had contacted my brother first Yo. as a hoop diver. And he had mentioned that he was working with six other hoop divers. And so they took us all as a group. Can you describe Lucia for us? Lucia is, it's called Lucia, Waking Dream of Mexico. So it takes you through all the different parts of Mexico and what makes Mexico, Mexico. I do two acts, hoop diving and pole climbing. The hoop diving act is on treadmills. There's two giant treadmills that connect together in the middle and it can go at different speeds, different directions. Stage is also turning. And from your time of getting the contract until now, has that been the one project you've been on? So we started creation September, 2015. We premiered the show April of 2016, and I just finished working about a month ago. So, so we're already to that point of the conversation, so I'm so curious about, as I'm sure that there are a lot of people in the circus community have 
that inside part of it. So we know that Cirque du Soleil has ter- taken this big turn in history like the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. So where were you before Cirque went through their layoffs? So we had just started our European tour and we did two months in London. We finished in London February 29th. And then we all had about a week and a half, almost two weeks of vacation before we were going to start in Moscow. I think when everyone was on vacation is when it was kind of starting to hit, but we weren't really aware of it yet because everyone was in different places and it wasn't like Europe wasn't full on lockdown yet. I remember when we had heard that other shows were being closed down, but we had also heard that in Moscow there was a lot of little like the the spread wasn't as big in Moscow as it was in France or Italy or Spain. So we still felt like we were kind of safe over there. And the first day we arrived, we still went through the normal procedure of immigration. And then it was kind of hour by hour, it began to change and get more and more serious. And so they hadn't even finished setting up the tent and everything was put on hold. We would just, we were just waiting in the hotel for what the next step was going to be. How was that communicated to you? The decisions were happening in Montreal. Lucio was actually the last touring show that was still standing. It's canceled, and then immediately they started the teardown, and they started sending people home. So finding flights for people to get home. Every hour, the rules of that were changing. So it was how do we get people safely back to their countries? Speaking of which, where are you currently? So I came back home to San Francisco. Are you staying in your family's home? Yeah, right now I'm in my mom and dad's house. Actually, the whole family's here because everyone is kind of on hold right now. So Yeah, it's, it's so weird. It's such a weird time. Um, so what is your official status right now as an artist? Are you unemployed? So yeah, technically the way they dealt with it is a temporary layoff. We all are still on the insurance, but as every single show in Vegas, all the touring shows, all the resident shows, everything's been canceled. So we've all just been temporarily laid off until we can get some news about when we would restart. Are you at all nervous for the future of, of your job? Or do you feel pretty confident that once things start to open up again, you have a show to go back to? Well, actually, it's super interesting because uh, Moscow was actually supposed to be my last city. So I had already decided to move on from Lucia, but then we didn't even get to open in Moscow. And so they extended my contract until the end of September. Leaving Lucia, did you have another job lined up? No, I didn't. I was on tour with them for about four, four and a half years. And I was kind of hoping to see what else I was good at outside of the circus world. While I was on Lucia, I had been going to school, City College in San Francisco, taking online classes. When you're a circus performer, you know, it's always somewhat part of you. So, I mean, I would see, I kind of wanted to be stable in one place when I was done with the touring life. So I wanted to see what else I could have done. I want to thank Marta for taking the time to speak with us today. And of course, we wish her all the best in the future. If you'd like to find out more about the Contemporary Circus and Immersive Arts Center or learn how you can support us as we support circus artists around the globe, you can find us online at www.ccic.us. Thanks, and we'll see you next week. Oh, is that yours? You might want to click on it. Or have you subscribed? Have you? Come on.